We are live for a new episode of the Trick Podcast. I am Fred Lambert, your host, and I'm joined by Seth Winchaw. How are you doing this week, Seth? I'm good. All right, let's jump right in. Uh, big surprise this week. Tesla announced another stock split, another upcoming stock split that's going to be determined by the shareholders later this year. Apparently at the shareholders meeting, which um, I mean, it's not always the same time in the shareholders meeting, but uh, normally it's in June. I think it wasn't last year because of uh, the COVID restriction, but uh, generally it's held in June. Tesla hasn't announced it just yet, but I would expect uh, I would expect it to be. And um, what Tesla said is that I'm quoting from, from the release this week on the March 28th, that uh, the board approved uh, a stock order proposal for the upcoming 2022 annual meeting of stockholders uh, for an increase in the number of authorized share of common stock through an amendment of the company's amended restated certificate of, of incorporation in order to enable a stock split of the company's common stock in the form of a stock dividend the board has approved in the management's proposal. Uh, but the stock dividend would be contingent on final board approval. Uh, that, that had created a little bit of confusion in people, especially in the media. A lot of the people uh, reported it as Tesla is going to give out a, a dividend. But it's it, it, there's a clear distinction with a stock dividend. So it's just a way for to do a stock split. Uh, and they, don't, they, they actually didn't specify uh, what kind of stock split it's, it's going to be. In 2020, it was a... a a one a, a five for one so you, you get five stocks for one so maybe something similar maybe a four for one this time so it's because the stock price is just not exactly as high as it was last time uh, but it's getting pretty close and um so in order to give you those extra share for your share that you have those share are uh distributed through a dividend but it's not a stock it's not a, a cash dividend like your regular dividend it's more share uh to add to the one that you have but the one that you have also in the new ones uh, uh, are reducing value uh, appropriately through um, uh, based on, again, what, what, what kind of ratio it's going to be. And uh, this was announced on um, March 28th. So it's not an April Fool's joke, as uh, Mike Taylor just <laughs> mentioned on LinkedIn. Uh, it, it shouldn't be, at least. But it, it is it is kind of a strange situation here. It, the, the stock price is, is quite high, like a, a per share. It's trading over $1,000 now. When Tesla did it back in 2020, it was about a $1,300 a share. So it was a little bit higher. And also, it, it it's becoming a little bit less relevant because there's not a lot of uh, reason behind doing a stock split other than our price per share is high and smaller individual investor that want to purchase a smaller amount of share. Uh, it's, it's harder for them if the share price is higher. If they want to just put $500 in Tesla, how do they do that? Well, for the most part, they, they can now because a lot of the brokers or the trading platform nowadays offer a fractional share on, especially on the big stocks like Tesla is a very big, very popular stocks for those for those uh, uh, on those apps. And they offer you can buy like just a, a small fraction of a share at, starting at one dollar. And um, and I would assume that the target market for a stock split is smaller individual investors. And most of smaller individual investors are on those apps I'm talking about. Robin Hood in the U.S., well, simple in Canada. I am told, though, by uh, friends in Europe that uh, this is not as popular, uh, those brokers that offer fractional share in Europe. So maybe that's the target for, for Tesla and other, because Tesla is not alone in doing those stock split these days. Uh, Amazon uh, announced one recently. Uh, Apple did one last year or the year before that. Uh, I don't remember exactly. I think it was it might have been a year or two or three more years ago. Yeah, GameStop just announced one. Yeah, uh, and, and I think they announced one with like the stock not being that high <laughs> per share too. The uh, pretty optimistic, but it looks more like of an opportunistic move because tried well not traditionally but with more of a lately. If you do announce a stock split, if you do do a stock split, it does increase the value of the stock. Uh, Again, the reason would be, oh, you get access to more people. So more people are going to invest, more people are going to hold. Uh, it's going to help the supply and demand and, and increase the value. However, with the, with that announcement, the stock shoot up in value over $100 billion, which is like the valuation of Ford. Like, yeah, Tesla had it a Ford valuation just through announcing a stock split that's not even approved just yet. So, uh, uh, however, though, it's not... Uh, this can be convoluted a little bit because 
the the that was announced among other things that were that was announced around the same time and oh Fred, I might have lost your audio. Fred, I believe you're muted. You might have to select your audio. There you go. Sorry about this, everyone. We're uh, working on the audio now. You might want to just try to switch to your laptop microphone. We'll be right back. For what it's worth, stock split, mostly about money. There he is. All right. Voice. You're back. All right. I'm not sure what happened. My browser lost my microphone for some reason. I'm not sure Weird. why. Um, let me just pull back up my uh, uh, the, the show page so that people can follow along what I'm saying. It's going to take just a second. I apologize. Et voila. You said you should have it now. All right. Okay, and we're back. Sorry for that, everyone. I hope that's not going to happen again. Uh, so yeah, these uh, these are the, the the cafe, the the corporate average fuel economy requirement standard that um, the the Trump administration kind of get gave some uh, leniency to the, the automakers to uh, have much lower fines uh, if you don't achieve the uh, fuel economy standards that there were. I agreed with the um, Obama administration back in 2016. So right before uh, Trump left office, uh, the, the administration pushed for NHTSA to um, to change the fines uh, to five dollars fifty instead of fourteen dollars per point one uh, miles per gallon per vehicle, which doesn't sound like a lot of money, but when you're selling like millions of vehicles, it, it, it is a lot of money. Uh, so basically if you don't achieve uh the standard that uh was the for the, this year or no, for 2020 it was for, but i think it's still for this year though um 40.9 miles per gallon that was the target so if your fleet average is not that um and if it's not that by one miles per gallon but that's that means that's 10 time uh 14 dollars so $140 per car that you sold in, in the U.S. Um, now, that was less than half of that, like almost a third of that. And now it's going to be reinstated to the full amount, $140. Again, that can be more, it can be less, depending on how much you missed, how much you gained. And if you are over it, uh, then you get credits and you can sell those credits to uh, automakers that miss the miss the the target and so that it's a way to encourage the automakers that are doing better and discourage those that are, are, are missing the target uh, for example um fca was one that missed the target uh, in 2020 and in comparison i think tesla tesla had an a wild amount 685 miles per gallon uh they, they don't calculate it they calculate for like a fleet average like so it's not it's not exactly like a per car. It wouldn't make sense. But uh, Tesla has a lot of those credits. So I'm trying to justify here why Tesla stock uh, increased in value a lot. And I don't know if we missed that. I don't know when my mic went off. But uh, that might be another reason why the stock went up too, because that's going to be potentially hundreds of millions more of uh, 
uh, credits that Tesla is going to get uh, through that decision and any other automakers to that uh, are doing better. And then around the same time too, Biden, uh, the Biden administration evoked the Defense Production Act to boost access to uh, minerals that are uh, used for production of batteries that are found in EVs and other energy storage uh, uh, products. So this um, uh, this is something that dates from the Cold War that just uh, allows to uh, un un uh, unlock some money, some investment uh, to produce some goods or in, in this case, or some, some mineral production uh, for the sake of national defense, national security. And the, the uh, logic here is uh, related to the Russia's invasion of Ukraine, of course, and the gas well, we say gas shortage. There's not really a gas shortage, but there's there's a fear of gas shortage that is leading to price increases, and the situation could potentially affect national security. And a potential solution, I guess, though it is it is being it is a bit controversial, is that oh well, electric vehicles could could fix that because you don't need gas with it, which technically is true, but at the same time, it's definitely not a short term solution. Like it's the. Uh, the, a lot of democratic uh, politicians nowadays are, are are saying that oh, you, if you don't want to pay too much uh, for gas, you just go buy an electric car. But obviously, this is not something that's accessible to uh, a lot of people. Like most people, cannot even buy a new car, regardless if it's electric or gas. So asking them to to do that in order to avoid paying more at the gas pump is not really a solution for them. Uh, but nonetheless, long term, it is certainly a solution. And long term, we're going to need. A lot more minerals in order to make that happen uh so that that follows basically what uh, happened a few uh, weeks ago few or was a few months when the um the administration had did a bunch of minerals to the critical mineral list so that uh you, you can bypass some of the many bureaucratic red tape that you need to do in order to uh deploy new production of uh of a, of a mine uh, and the U.S. is far behind on that, especially when it comes to lithium, nickel, cobalt, uh, graphite, uh, all things that you need uh, to make uh, batteries for EVs. So what what this uh, the, those two moves put together, what it's going to do is uh, it's going to unlock some money for people that are, are, are looking to start those mines in the U.S. And it's going to also... Um, probably make it a little bit easier especially uh, there's a lot there, there's a lot of mines right now mine project that are fully funded that are uh, relatively close to entering production um, or construction at least but uh, the, there's uh, environmental challenge to them uh, a lot of them to a challenge to like uh, for example I think it's the uh, lithium Americas that uh, the, the the project in Nevada that's being challenged by the local uh, native uh, uh, tribes yep. there. So th th those things, uh, using the national defense argument, could facilitate uh, approving those projects. Uh, and sure enough, Lithium America is one of the companies that have most benefited uh, stock-wise from this announcement. The stocks, I think, went up like 20% since the, the move was announced earlier this week. I'm not sure if it's true the true value of it, but uh, same goes with Tesla and the stock split, really. Yeah. All right, something that um, has worried a few people this week is that Elon confirmed that uh, Mr. Carperty, uh, Andre Carperty, uh, is on a sabbatical, a four-month sabbatical, though, so not, some, not a full year, but uh, still a decent sabbatical. And, of course, Carperty is known as the head of AI at Tesla, and this is a critical time for, for, for Tesla's AI uh, effort with uh, Elon claiming that Tesla is going to achieve Full self-driving, safer than human driver by the end of this year. Um, the expansion in Europe, the expansion in Canada just, just started this week. And the, um, the program is in full swing, basically. And now you have the guy that's uh, basically at the end of it, though. Elon has been lately kind of uh, uh, prompting up other people. He, he said that people give too much credit to uh, himself and Andre. Uh, for for autopilot and for full self driving, and he mentioned like the the head of software of autopilot, and uh, which I, I don't remember his name unfortunately, but uh, a few other people involved that are, are critical. Um, and then you have Elon saying that, and then you have Elon saying, "Oh, Caperty is now on a four month sabbatical." And we do know that Tesla in the past, Tesla executive have gone on sabbatical and not come back. Uh, Set uh, reminded me of the 
example of Doc Field. Uh, Doc Field in 2000, uh, 2018, you, it was announced that he was on a, a leave of absence to, uh, quoting Tesla, recharge and spend some time with his family. And then a few months later, uh, Tesla announced that uh, he wouldn't actually return from his... Uh, and Tesla said at the time, too, specifically that he hasn't left the company. He still has the company. It's just a leap of option. And sure enough, a few months later, uh, they confirmed that he wouldn't be coming back. Uh, if you remember, Phil went to Apple, the special project, which is rumored to be the car, of course. And but then, and Phil was coming uh, to Tesla from Apple. Was he coming directly from Apple? Or was it was coming from the Segway. I think it was coming from no, Apple. Right? Apple was more recent. He was at yeah. Ford, Segway, Apple, Tesla, Tesla, Apple, Apple, Ford, Ford. Yeah, <laughs> and now he's right. at Ford. Yeah. It's, so the guy gets around, but now now he has the big job at Apple. Since uh, Apple at Ford, at Ford, since Ford split, well, split internally the vehicle business is basically the CTO of the vehicle business, so uh, the electric vehicle business. So good for him. So I'm not saying also, exactly the same. Yep. Then JB Straubel, when he kind of backed out of Tesla, didn't he say he was going on like a sabbatical or something? Uh, not exactly. We did report at Electric that uh, Straubel was less seen around Tesla uh, prior to him leaving. And then when he left, he was given an advisor role at Tesla. So he didn't like fully left. And then he yeah. left. Um, mm. Of course, there's also uh, Jérôme Gullien who right. took a sabbatical. But then he, he did came back for a few years. And uh, then he was also less seen at Tesla for a while, and then he left. So there's 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 some precedent around that. I'm not as worried about Capri. First of all, because when Elon announced it on Twitter this week, Capri took to Twitter right away and commented on it. So that that the fact that he's talking, unlike the others with the situation, uh, it doesn't look like uh, and the situation. And, and maybe not for Doc Field, but for uh, Gullian, for example, we 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 have heard that there was some clash of heads between him and Musk. And when that starts happening, normally it's the beginning of the end for whoever is the other person. But uh, in this case, we, we haven't heard anything about that. Uh, Capri, as far as we know, is very much appreciated by Musk and by everyone else at Tesla. And he did respond after that, that he's taking some time off to rest and travel after almost five years at Tesla. Like uh, five years at Tesla, <laughs> that's, that takes a toll on your body and mind probably. Right. So well-deserved, Mr. Capri. Uh, especially excited to get focused time focus time to resharpen my technical edge and train some neural nets. Do I already miss all the robots and GPU dojo clusters and looking forward to having them at my fingertips again. So this comments is very bullish on him actually returning to Tesla in my opinion. So uh, that's good news for that. Uh, Gigafactory Texas, we learned this week that Tesla applied for a mega pack project an energy storage project at the factory. We know that right now Tesla is starting to build a solar roof system, uh, not solar roof, solar, solar, uh, solar roof implies solar tiles, but uh, a solar rooftop with solar panel. Uh, it looks like it, based on the first installation, looks like the E of Tesla in it. So it's prob probably Tesla's gonna sp spell a giant Tesla, uh, Tesla logo and solar panel on the rooftop that you're gonna be able to see from uh, from the sky, maybe even from space, uh, just with how big that factory is, how big the building itself, like you can see here. Uh, but uh, sure enough, they, they're going to also combine that with the uh, uh, energy storage system. And in the application this week, Tesla didn't mention uh, how big of a of a system it is. It, it, the application uh, mentioned Gary, Texas, permanent switchyard, and BESS. BESS is battery energy storage system. Uh, but the construction site is on 53 acres. So that's uh, definitely a decent size uh, system that they plan to deploy it. And if they have a giant energy uh, uh, solar system attached with that, it would make sense to have a, a big uh, energy storage system also. Uh, and of course, uh, Texas, the grid in Texas is notoriously uh, not reliable. Uh, they, especially in the winter, they have a lot of brownouts. Uh, even blackouts, and um, this is going to want to avoid that completely because obviously if I uh, don't have power for a few days, this is millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of uh, of cost that uh, it is they're losing by not producing cars. So if they have a solar and a big energy storage system at the same time, uh, even in the winter, they could, they could probably uh, 
operate independently from the grid for at least a few days, I think. Again, we don't, don't know the exact capacity of the system, but I would assume it's going to be quite uh, quite big. All right. Speaking of solar and energy storage, uh, we learned this week that uh, Tesla is having some problem with the solar roof. Um, we reported on that uh, a little bit over the last few months that the supply chain issues are not just affecting Tesla's automotive business, but also its, um, its solar business. At first, it was the solar panels uh, having difficulty getting access to supply. Not just an issue with Tesla, an issue throughout the industry, but started affecting Tesla late last year. Wasn't affecting the solar roof just yet. Um, Tesla, of course, makes its own solar roof tiles, but it require it, it is um, dependent on suppliers for the solar cells that are using the solar roof tiles. So it, a supply issue could also happen. It looked like the Tesla was relying on inventory of solar cells to produce the solar roof tiles, and it started affecting um, the, the the problem. Started affecting the installations uh, around February this year. So just last well two months ago now, I guess. Um, so at that point in February, we reported that Tesla was having some issues scheduling new new project because of the tiles issue. But now what we learn is that a few weeks later, Tesla had to virtually pause all installation, all scheduling of new installations because they didn't have the solar tile supplies at all. Uh, but even beyond that, because Tesla is so aggressive, in their installation uh, scheduling of uh, solar roof tiles and uh, they, they even start some project without even having the material just yet it's leaving some customers without without even a roof on right now uh this i got the example here from uh mr uh his, his last name is hard <laughs> ryan project uh, i would assume i'm probably just missing him. Well, let's just call him call him ryan he's a solar roof customers in the in the los angeles area and uh in january uh so, so you also if you know anything about Tesla Solar and Tesla Solar Roof in particular, it's so hard to talk to anyone at Tesla. Super difficult. It's just uh, the they are extremely busy and the, uh, they don't they are known not to uh, reply <laughs> soon enough or at all sometimes. So he didn't even know when his installation is going to happen. And it, it, his project is particular too because he, it's uh, an existing house with an existing roof and uh, an extra a, a new construction attached to it to an, an expansion to the house so it's both like a new roof and uh, uh an existing roof to remove and and replace so he was trying to figure out when the installation would start and then he, he could he couldn't talk to anyone but he just let his the manager of his project know like hey whenever you're ready uh the house is ready to get the roof on to to remove the existing one to get the new one and to get the new one on the on the new construction and they didn't even tell him nothing. At one point, he looks at his Tesla account and it shows that his installation date is in a week. Uh, that was in January. So the, the team showed up. Uh, they uh, they removed the existing roof and they put what uh, they call the dry in. So it's, it's the, the state of the roof with this the film on top of it, uh, as you can see in those pictures. That uh, the dry in is that this is this is supposed to be waterproof. There's not there's you can leave that up uh, like that for up to six months and there shouldn't be any water problem before you install the final material, which in this case is uh, solar roof tiles. Uh, so he was told at that point that uh, the tiles should come within the next eight weeks and they should do the installation within an, 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 the, that period of time. So that would certainly respect the six month period of the dry in uh, system. However, now it's been more than uh, eight weeks and there's no tiles in sight. Uh, he couldn't get an actual uh, build date for the project. His uh, Tesla solar roof advisor told him that it could actually not happen until the end of the year, which obviously would, way, would be way longer than the, the six months of uh, the guaranteed drying of the roof. And even then, that, that six months is not even a completely true because he already had leaks on two occasions. Though Tesla came came and fixed those leaks uh, without too much of an issue. But if there's already leaks, if the, the, the tiles don't come in the next uh, few weeks, it's starting to get worrying, of course. Um, so we looked uh, up with some of our sources. And sure enough, uh, the, the sources says that tile availability is basically uh, none right now. Like They have very few projects that are uh, supplied. And they're not scheduling any new solar roof project at this point because they just don't have the tiles. And of course, you have people like Ryan that are stuck without any, so they're going to be the, the priority. Uh, I couldn't really 
confirm anything about the end of the year. He was also told by one of the advisors who came on site that uh, the tiles are stuck at the Ellie port. I couldn't confirm that either, but that's not impossible because there's a lot of things that are stuck at the port right now. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, container space and, and uh, trucks to move them out of the, of the, of the port uh, on trucks to, to go elsewhere. So this is an issue. And uh, what I learned today, and I haven't posted about it just yet, so it's going to be a, an exclusive now for the, the podcast. Solar roof now isn't great, uh, the, the, not doing great. The solar panels are back up and running uh, very well now, and Tesla managed to secure a lot of supplies, and they switch all the teams for solar roof to the solar panels, and they are installing, they are scheduling like crazy right now. So if you're on the market for Tesla solar uh, panel installations or a rooftop retrofit, not a solar roof. Uh, you can, uh, you, you, in, if you, especially if you have already a reservation on it, because of course Tesla is already quite the back order. But uh, you can contact your the scheduling team and and try to get a, a, a uh, your installation schedule. They are doing a lot of them right now, so this is the good news on that front. And also uh, the the power wall too, of course, because Tesla has linked the power wall product with the solar uh, panels. So if you want a power wall. And want a solar uh, installation, now is the time to get one. But not for the solar roof. All right. We have a few more news items that we're going to discuss. But uh, if you guys have questions for us, we're going to have some time at the end of the show to discuss uh, any other topics you want us to get us uh, into or specific question. You can put them in the comment section on YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn. We should be able to get them in our feed. If you can put questions in all cap before it, uh, that's going to help us find them. Uh, if not, just put the whole question in all caps. It's also fine. All right. Um, so the quarter ended yesterday. We we got a few people that started uh, sending sending the, the production and delivery numbers. Uh, uh, Tesla always waits a few days after the end of the quarter. We should get them tomorrow or Sunday, Monday at the latest. But it's going to be an interesting one because Tesla, the record quarter, of course, last quarter. Q1 is generally a little bit slower. Uh, but with with this time around, there's there's also some issues with Gigafactory Shanghai that had to close uh, not one but twice. Uh, early in March, there was a few days that they had to shut down due to COVID restriction because China is having a surge in COVID cases. But over the last week, Gigafactory has been completely shut down since Monday. And uh, it was supposed to be open today and tomorrow, uh, but Tesla has delayed that opening probably to Sunday and Monday at the at the earliest, maybe even uh, longer than that, because Shanghai is doing a two-step lockdown where half of the city uh, is locked down for four or five days first, and then the second half of the city uh, for another four or five days. Tesla Gigafactory Shanghai was in the the location of the first part of the of the shutdown and tesla apparently even tried to avoid shutting down completely by keeping its employees on site on sunday and doing a closed loop of the factory so no one gets in no one gets out that type of thing um but uh, the what we learned from uh, routers apparently is that they figure out they don't have enough food and supply to keep them there for five days so they were like eh, not a good idea to keep employee hostage there for for that long so they decided okay we're gonna we're gonna shut down then they were gonna supposed to reopen um again today or uh, and tomorrow uh, but they decided to extend that uh, presumably because of supply issues because uh, they have suppliers in Shanghai too that uh, they require to to keep production going, and they are having issue keep uh, staying open too. And also, even if they are open in that half of the city, they have a lot of employees that live in the other half of the cities, and it's going to be hard to get them there. Uh, actually, impossible to get them there. So that can also affect production. So this this is kind of a big deal because Tesla Gigafactory Shanghai is a highly productive factory that's estimated to produce uh, more than two thousand vehicle per day. So being shut down for uh, five days, that's 10,000 less vehicle that you're going to produce uh, during the, the quarter. Uh, so this is a big deal, and it's definitely going to affect us as Q1 results. By how much, we're going to have to wait a few uh, few days probably to find out, but this is significant. Are, are you surprised <clears throat> Elon Musk didn't uh, make a big stink about it? And, <laughs> you know, like like Alameda County uh, when, when they closed the Fremont plant, uh, Elon said that... Uh, he was sending back 
his workers against the orders of the government. Yeah. And and if they were going to arrest anybody, arrest him first. Yeah, I don't know if he wanted to spend a few days in Chinese jail. <laughs> Maybe he's not into that. Also, I he didn't, why he did, why he didn't, didn't personally personally insult the health official in Shanghai like he did in the in the That's Bay right. Area when when that happened. That was also like not his best uh, his best moment. Yeah. Uh, even if you disagree with them, like personally insulting them for doing their job and having good like intentions matter. People they had those people have good intention. Like not even if you disagree with them, it's not worth. Uh, and so they were infiltrated them. by shorts, the uh, Alameda yeah. County. Oh, yeah, they're all that, shorts. That's that's crazy. Um, I right, this was an interesting news this week. Um, Porsche, Quantum Scape, 9 11, all put together. I love all those things, yeah. Uh, don't I don't like all 9 11s, though? No, uh, <laughs> firstly, the e 9 11, yeah, yeah, the 9 9 uh, 1 1. Uh, it's, uh, so we know if you remember quantum scape is a company that's developing solid state batteries, uh, one of the leaders in the field and they have a big investment from Volkswagen. Of course, Porsche is linked to Volkswagen and, uh, the 911 too. So that's, that's Porsche has been weird about the 911. Porsche has been arguably one of the most aggressive, uh, legacy automakers in terms of electrification. The uh, early on, they were like 50% by 2025 of our, of our cars are going to be electric, which is uh, well, not as much as we would like, but a lot more than a lot of other automakers. And uh, and then the Taycan took off. And then we have the Mackin that's probably going to come soon with the latest generation powertrain. But when it comes to the 911, they were always like, nah, 911 is not going to be electric. It's, it's our flagship sports car. It's... Uh, it's known for its handling, so it's light and it's tougher to make an electric car light and having great handling. So they were very resistant in making the 911 electric. But uh, this week, the uh, where did the report come from? Uh, just want to make sure. Uh, Manager Magazine uh, reported that uh, the the Porsche is working with QuantumScape through Volkswagen uh, to be among the first to be able to utilize their solid state battery technology into a uh, production vehicle and that the 911 is actually uh, the top of the list to make it uh, which kind of makes sense it's not it's not a confirmed news again but manager magazine has a pretty decent um, track record especially when it comes to porsche they have a lot of sources of porsche so uh, the, the it would make sense to, to to wait basically for solid states uh, which can achieve higher energy density in order to make an electric 911 because you uh, you you have the capacity to make the battery uh, smaller, lighter, and um, and still have a, enough energy, enough power to have the performance that you would expect from from a Porsche 911. So this is an interesting news item this week that I thought that could be a. But at the same time, this is kind of far out to the future because I don't think Quantum Scape right now is guiding any production solid state battery uh, for commercial application for until the second half of the decade. So uh, if they say that uh, to see it in a car in production, I would say 2026 at the very uh, earliest. So that's kind of exciting, right? Yeah. I mean, 2026 isn't that far off. Like if you want to, if you want to pick up electric pickup, 2026 is like the the next available pickup is is going to happen in 2026. Yeah, almost like you I, you're just barely generating here. Um, yeah. Speaking of um, the Armor EV, we had some some new data this week that was interesting. So we were of course we were discussing the trucks last week because you you tested it, and uh, and your your full review is coming out. Is it coming out next week? Is it? Or? Yeah, the <clears throat> it's April 7th is the embargo date. Okay, April 7th, your full. Uh, uh, uh first drive review is gonna come out and uh so so the we know that the the first edition is sold out and that's of course the 150,000 all decked out version of the truck then gradually every year uh GMC is going to release a little bit cheaper uh lower powered version of the truck uh leading to 2024 when they have the, the 80 or 90,000 dollar version of the truck which is going to be the cheapest 
Um, so, we, but we never know exactly how popular that's that's gonna be in terms of uh, because because again, like you're pretty far out for the for the I say reasonably priced. It's it's still an expensive truck, but I mean, a hundred fifty thousand dollar vehicle. There's not that many people who can afford that. Uh, and uh, each trench of ten thousand you can remove from that, you very much widen your uh, market here. Um, but apparently, according to CNBC. Uh, GMC has gathered 65,000 reservation for the Hummer EV, but that that includes the pickup truck version and the SUV version that's coming out soon too. Right. Uh, so I, I would assume the SUV version. I, I would. They, they didn't break down and the uh, between the two. I don't think they did, but um, I would be curious to see which one is more popular. By the way, uh, I was told this information, but I was told it was embargoed until the seventh. Uh, so okay. So I don't know how they got the. Green light to post someone, that. someone at CNBC screwed up. Um, yeah, and uh, they also said uh, that uh, 95 percent conversion rate right now, but I, I don't put so much value in that because that's for the first edition only. And we saw this week too that, like, and that's not just for the Hummer, it's for basically every electric vehicle out there. People are already reselling them used for far more than the uh, the double, the, yeah, double, uh, even in the case of the Hummer EV. So the conversion rate don't really matter right now for the first edition because people are going to want to buy it just to resell it. So it's uh, it doesn't really gives you the uh, actual true take rate, especially not for like the cheaper version, for example. I think that's going to go down to maybe like 50 percent or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised uh, in a few years. Yeah. And in the 2024 number, um, I was also told that that's going to be optimistic. Yeah. So and and I would anticipate that on uh april 7th when all the reviews come out it's not just ours but like everybody else is going to review it i anticipate the number of people ordering on that day will be really high as well kind of like rivian um i think rivian like doubled their order base on their big uh announcement and that's when i ordered so i'm not going to order a, a hummer i've already decided <laughs> uh it's not, not my scene but it's an incredible vehicle. And for people yeah. who are going to buy huge pickup trucks, obviously not great for the environment. But a Hummer EV would be better for the environment. Yeah. And more fun. Yes. All right. This one, this one was kind of a bittersweet news. The i3 is coming back. The BMW i3 is coming back, but as a completely different vehicle. So for those who forgot that what the i3 looked like, it was kind of uh, the poster child for the weird mobile uh, uh, movement, <laughs> it's a trend, I should say. Uh, weird mobile, of course, is a, is a term that I think was coined by Elon, right? I think it was the first one to say it. Like, was the... Yep, so, somebody did. Yeah. So it was at a time that uh, like the, uh, other than Tesla, you basically had the Leaf and and the, and the BMW i3, and both of them were were weird looking in most people's eyes as of course it's subjective but not the best looking vehicles and uh, and a lot of people didn't understand too because they thought like it would make so much sense to just make an electric 3 series bmw 3 series is an extremely popular vehicle and uh, the design has evolved over the years but kind of incrementally because they had a good base of it like it, the the, the 3 Series has been a flagship vehicle for BMW, for BMW, and for the for the mid luxury segment for for decades and decades and decades. And um, but BMW instead decided to make this kind of weird uh, was it a three door with suicide doors uh, um, crossover weird vehicle. micro micro crossover well, yeah micro crossover that would be. Uh, and of course, then they decided not to make any other electric car for ten years. <laughs> uh, but now, now they're coming up less and left and right from BMW. You have the iX, you have the iX3, you have the i4, uh, you have uh, what's uh, what's they're launching the i7 next. Uh, the i7 next is going to be at the uh, New York Auto Show. Yeah, uh, so we're going to get our first look at that. So there's there's ton of BMWs coming out, uh, but there wasn't. It's, it's all very much high hand. Like the uh, iX, it starts at what eighty eighty thousand dollars. Uh, iX3 is a little bit cheaper, but it's not even in the US. Uh, you have uh, the um, i7. I also expect to be quite more. Ex a lot, it's basically a seven series equivalent, I would assume. So that's yep. going to be also very expensive. Uh, the i4 is also not cheap. So 
when is going to come like a, a Model 3 competitor, which at one point BMW was saying that the iX was going to be a Model 3 competitor, then it was a full-size SUV that started at $80,000, so not, not even close. Uh, but this right here, the new BMW i3 based on the 3 Series is exactly that. Beautiful-looking car. Yep. And, so, and the, the main thing, if you look at that front end here, you still have the, the kidney-shaped grille that's the flagship of BMW. But people are freaking out over the the ones that are on the electric versions of uh, of uh, BMW's lineup on the iX uh, on the i4. Uh, they are the, the deeper ones that uh, that uh, they are using the beaver tooth uh, that they are uh, that they are calling it, and uh, and people hate those. Like I've I've not heard a lot of people that are, are are liking them, and and it's strange because on the on the gasoline version you, you have the softer ones like like you see in this one here that are a lot better appreciated. Uh, by design enthusiasts. So for the three series, um, now the BMW i3, you still have those. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what's happening there. If it's going to be a trend, it's, that's going to come. But I don't know. But uh, I think that's going to go a lot, a lot smoother. But this BMW i3 is being launched only in uh, China, at least for now. Uh, it's called the BMW i3 E Drive 35L, and. Uh, it's uh it's gonna be produced by um what's it called um bmw brilliance automotive which is the partnership that they have uh, in china with a, a chinese manufacturer and the the, the specs are, are nice uh the uh, you have a 70.3 kilowatt hour battery pack in there uh that's uh gross uh energy capacity net energy capacity 66.1 kilowatt hour which is equivalent to the like the bigger uh model model three uh, battery pack, uh, something close to that. Uh, max charging power, though it's a little bit disappointing, and 95 uh, kilowatt uh, DC, 11 kilowatt AC. Uh, max output of 200 kilowatt uh, for the motor. They don't say if it's a rear-wheel drive or anything like that. But, uh, I would assume it is. Uh, so the, with the the range, they're talking about the 526 uh, kilometers of range, which is uh, which is. Uh, 327 miles, but that's on the CLTC uh, Chinese cycle uh, standard, which is uh, very generous. So I would expect something closer to maybe 260 to 80 uh, miles, but still a, a decent range for a car that I'm going to assume is not going to be too expensive, really. Uh, but again, only in China, and it uh, and it's entering production quite soon. Uh, market launch expected in May. Do they say what kind of batteries? Was going to no. be lithium ion. Yeah, uh, at sixty-six kilowatt hour, I would I would assume that uh, yeah, it's gonna it, it's gonna be a nickel base uh, chemistry. I think it's not like a standard then, range battery pack. And then two hundred ten kilowatts. That's around three hundred horsepower. Yeah, sounds about right. Not bad. Yeah, the specs are good, especially for like what's going to be a mid luxury car. You know what though? The game has kind of changed a little bit. Like. That those are good specs for like a BMW gas car competitor, but like it's not going to go anywhere close to a, a Model Three performance. No, here, here's the thing. I think it's probably. Gonna, I think it's going to probably compare to the Model Three standard range. Yep. Or rear wheel drive now, I guess they call it. Uh, I think in, in terms of specs, all through it's going to compare to that. Now, is it going to compare to that in terms of pricing? That's going to be the thing. Of course, at the same time, like Tesla doesn't even care about pricing much right now. You just you can sell whatever they want, especially in China. So, right. so maybe and also traditionally the the quality and the build quality and the handling of BMWs has been a little bit better than Tesla. So, yeah, China, and also and also the, the the three series is still a popular car in China too, like a very popular vehicle, a gasoline version. I mean, so having an electric version that that could be that could be a big deal for BMW there. Yep. Uh, in terms of the size of it, apparently it's very much similar to the to the three series, uh, as we can see from the picture. But uh, it's a little bit longer, eleven centimeter longer wheelbase. They haven't released any pictures. Like this is the only picture that uh, of the actual car that you can see. Uh, I went through through the whole BMW website trying to get more pictures, couldn't find any. Kind of weird. But again, I would expect that it will look almost exactly like a gas powered three series. All right, so we jump into the comments. Yeah, last chance if you want to yeah. throw us a comment. Uh... Oh, 
Did we just lose set? I think we just lost set. It's probably going to come back in a second. Yeah. Oh, right there. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Hit the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Moving on here. Uh, April Fool's joke. I heard you guys are switched mm -hmm. to internal combustion engine vehicle news exclusively with new channel called Ice Trek. That would be a silly thing. Question. Did you get an invite to the Cyber Rodeo at Gigafactory, Texas? I'm a Texan, Model 3 owner, have a Cyber Truck reservation and an active Starlink subscription, and I still didn't get an invite. Uh, I feel wonder, you. I feel you, Greg. <laughs> I wonder if Greg is on Twitter and has praised Elon yet today, because I think I think that is where your your invites are going. Uh, no, we didn't actually get one. Uh, surprisingly, I guess. Um, if anyone has a as a plus one, yeah, we'll go. Uh, yeah, you can send it our way. We're gonna we're gonna definitely show up. We'll bring some T-shirts here, yeah. all the cyber rodeo stuff. Um, all right, moving on. Roll of twenty says Texas winterized their grid. Had zero issues this winter yeah we'll see mm -hmm. but still a good thing to have the mega packs as a backup yeah i mean you know, any big company should have a backup these days it's really you know you never know what's going to happen and so, zero issue that's not what i heard though i heard that uh yeah, yeah there was some brown especially brown in apps. february like there was some a very cold wave and uh all right uh patricio benedon says question i've been playing around with the tesla configurator in germany and now the Model 3 SR Plus shows an increment of 61 kilometers in range and 65 kilometers in in LR. Delivery oh, estimate right. 2022. Are these the new 4680s? No, not, not for the Model 3. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it wouldn't be on the would... SR Plus either. It would probably be on the long range. Yeah, I don't even know where a, a Model 3 with 4680 would be coming from. Uh, careful with the range. Uh, when you look at the range on the Tesla configurator too, because uh, Tesla now sometimes automatically prompt uh, the bigger wheels and or the smaller wheels, uh, depending on the, on one type of uh, of version that you uh, you're, you're clicking on. So the range is going to be affected by that. Um, so make sure that you're on the on the first on the smaller wheels first. All right, uh, moving on. Roller twenty. My comment on LFP is because we need affordable EVs for the masses. No, I didn't see that initial yeah. comment, but yeah. we do need uh, LFP batteries for the masses. And while not quite as energy dense, uh, they're easier to make with, with more iron and less nickel. Yeah, especially in the latest generation, they have less issue with um, with the cold uh, like they did in the prior generation. It's still, it's still not as good as nickel on the cold, for sure, but uh, it's getting closer to it. So once you have that, yeah, for the for the shorter range, uh, 200 miles vehicles, uh, it's going to be LFP all the way. Yeah, and, and also they're a little safer mm -hmm. with fires, and I think the charging mm -hmm. is pretty close. All right, Mind Your Body asks, uh, what do you think of the upcoming Van Moof e-bikes on April 5th? Uh, well, you're on the wrong podcast. We have an e-bike <laughs> podcast uh on saturday tomorrow? every every other saturday i can't remember if yeah. it's tomorrow it might have been yeah. last week anyway uh join us for that at the uh, wheelie podcast but we will find out uh, about the uh, van move e-bikes we do have a post on electric about it um van move actually has some really cool um motorcycle -y type high-end uh, e-bikes that don't quite fit into any category so i think they might step down from that and and show something like a class three 28 mile per hour or something or other all right uh so Te stefan frock jar a lot of weird vowels there uh, tesla is unreliable in a lot of cases just try to look for the number of power walls sold in the eu and the number of power wall insta installs in the eu huh sold in the eu and installs in the eu yeah i'm not even sure what uh what that would mean uh how how is that uh, what what would make Tesla unreliable on that on that front like, the, the thing with the power wall too is especially since Tesla attached it to the the solar um, panels and Tesla doesn't sell any uh, solar installation in Europe so that's that's definitely a problem there 
but uh, also Tesla focus power wall installation in markets where it makes the most sense. Like for example, like I was I was super lucky to get one in Quebec because of the referral program. Otherwise, they wouldn't install one in Quebec because it just doesn't make enough financial sense. So depending on the market in Europe, it's the same thing. There's some market that makes a lot more sense to have uh, energy storage rather than others. So Tesla and to be to be fair though, to to the to the guy's point, uh, Tesla has still taken orders from from those markets and then later out decided ah oh, it's not worth selling them right now that we don't have enough supply when we can send them to markets where it makes a lot more sense. Uh, they probably shouldn't have even open orders in those markets really. All right, <clears throat> so in weird mobiles, uh, we have a correction. It was the Nissan Leaf, BMW i3, Mitsubishi. IMEV, I think it was called. Yeah. And two other triples. I mean, the, the Chevy Bolt was kind of in that same class. I guess it was 2016 it came out. It was similar to the <coughs> BMW. I3. The Bolt? With a B? Yeah. You thought it was a weird mobile too? Oh, yeah, it I was mean, very similar to the I3 in shape. Yeah. I, I like it. That, that bad, yeah. All right, uh, Stefan also saying the BMW i3 in China is ru rumored. I, I'm assuming he means to use LFP batteries. No, yep, that would be a. I would be surprised by that. Yeah, I wonder if they're getting them from uh, CATL as well. All right, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Andrew Carpathy seems to be tweeting a lot for someone who's on a sabbatical. Actually, well, tweet Twitter is not supposed to be a job. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like you, you're supposed to tweet on your vacation, not on your yeah. on the clock. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a, exactly. All right, Greg Poland's back with another question. Do you think we'll see more electric vehicles that aren't super performance Tesla style and just standard acceleration driving capabilities? I think we already are. I think yeah, you know, exactly. Like we the see Volkswagen ID four, but the yeah. Hyundai Ionic, like all those base models are are quite un unexciting, but they do have mm -hmm. fast versions, all wheel drive versions, but. You know, I think I think these companies like they don't they don't want to put out the craziest acceleration thing out there, and most people don't care about that. Anyways. Right. Although it is fun. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see. Twenty. We got different languages here. I uh, didn't change the configuration of the wheels. Yeah, I'm not saying that you you did change it. I'm saying that Tesla configuration automatically prompts it. It's annoying actually, and that also affects the the timeline because uh, if you if you spring for any kind of option, especially like the wheels or about FSDs at the top of the line, but the wheels and the uh, the paint you get the car faster too. Not just uh, different range. All right, Stefan clarifies last time uh on the power wall here in the eu tesla still had to install seventy thousand power walls that was sold uh years ago so uh, i guess what he's saying is tesla is quite behind in their yeah. power walls in europe yeah but like like i was saying tesla probably shouldn't even have accepted those orders way back because that's probably in markets that it doesn't make that much sense to install them other than for backup power uh and like a lot of people just wanted because they would they would it would prefer that to to a gas generator, which I understand, but you get so much more value out of it by combining it with uh, solar power generation. That uh, Tesla is going to focus on that, and not not necessarily just its its own solar generation like you do in the U.S. since they they do their own installation. But uh, in Europe, there's like in Germany, there's a high penetration of solar already. Um, and Tesla has they installed plenty of, of power walls there, but there's a supply issue of that too. All right, that's it for the comments. All right, well, I appreciate everyone for listening on the show this week. If you do like the show, please give us a thumbs up. The algorithm loves that. Uh, if you're listening on your podcast app, you can leave us a, a review there. Uh, that's also super helpful, but we appreciate it every time. And we're going to see you uh, same place, same time next week. Have a good one.